Come on now, people. I've been telling you for almost two years now, you need to have a GNR TV. And now sports are back. Football is back. Now is the perfect time for you to get this if you don't have it already. And if you look on over here, as I've been telling you before, you get all these amazing channels, every single one of them, for $20 a month for two devices. And if you look on up over here, it's written. It's written everything you get with GNR TV. If you want four devices, $40. And there's some cool extras right here. GNR TV, streaming done right. If you don't have it, get it. What more can I say? What more can I say? It's time to cut the damn cord, stop being ripped off by the dish and cable, and get this lovely thing we call GNR TV. Streaming done right. Let's get slicing and dicing with Sir Sturdy Horror fans. On this podcast, you will hear me and a guest do some movie reviews, random funny horror chats, and whatever else comes to mind. So tune in, kick back, relax, and always remember, I'll see you in your nightmares. Well, this Jason's mask. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Another episode of Horror Research 30. I got my guest, Michaela. Michaela, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Doing good. As you can see, since the last time we've recorded together, it's been a while. Everything's different. You got the green screen and all that cool stuff now. And your background's different now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which is cool. Mm-hmm. But um, so how what do, how is this this whole quarantine thing before you even started? How has it been been for you? It's been a mess. <laughs> At least a mess. Mm-hmm. Trying to do um research from home is a mess and trying to write proposals and do a uh, graduate school at home is a pain. Now, what are you going for again? I'm getting my master's in biology. Awesome. I want to do forensics, so. Nice. And I still like, that stuff doesn't bother you? Nope. <laughs> that, that, <clears throat> see, that, that right there is, is really... I mean, this kind of ties into this movie. There's some gory ass parts. I know it's fake, but just like. Oh, it gets disgusting, yeah. It does. <laughs> like the stuff in the movies, like this movie, Slither, I can deal with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, like a real crime scene, so to speak. Well, not even so to speak. A legitimate real crime scene where somebody was killed or whatever the case may be. And it's like a gory, you know, where it's like a real brutal scene. And you could just go there with no issue. Yep. Not just, I don't know how I, would, I really don't know how I would handle that. Like, all joking aside, because I've never, I've never been around anything like that for one, but still, I don't know how I would hold, I don't, I don't know what I would do. Because then you have, not only are you dealing with the looking of it, but then the smell, if there's a smell and all that other stuff. And then I know also, I guess, well, probably similar to doctors, you have to take that emotion away, which has to be hard at times, but yeah. It's something I'll have, I'll have to learn because I, I haven't been to a physical crime scene yet, but I have dealt with um, decomposing remains with my research and the smell is horrible and it is something you have to like get over. Like I'm used to it now dealt with like, cause I've been using uh, dead fish and so decomposing dead fish is even worse of a smell and it, it takes some time to get used to, but after a while it's just like, hmm. That's <laughs> it, just just, yep. Well, I had a, I have a professor that works with forensic entomology, and he um, often gets called into casework, and he says nothing's ever bothered him. But then there was one case, there's always going to be that one case, where some guy was um, thrown into a river from a loan shark. He was chopped up, and they were like, sift, they had to sift through the remains from the river, and it was like just soup at this point, and he said he was gagging. It was that bad. It's it's crazy and it's 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 crazy that for one another thing like I guess to have that job to be that person that just has to go there and deal with that. But I guess you can say again because you're doing forensics and all that, and then do- doctors have to deal with crazy. St- it's I just mm-hmm. I have to stay away from it. <laughs> as much as I love the gore and stuff in horror movies, but this is you know, this is make believe. Awesome. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. It's not nowhere near what, what you're going to be doing. <laughs> years. Hopefully. <laughs> Are you excited for it, though? Oh, yeah, I'm very excited. Now, is that something you always want, like, since you were a child? or? No, when I was a child, I wanted to be a vet. <laughs> But um, my dad talked me out of it because he was like, Michaela, you're not going to be able to put down those animals. And he's right. I have a bigger heart for he- animals than I do for humans. And I think that's why it switched. And um, I actually fell in love with a show called Dexter. Okay. And that's how I even found out that forensics was a thing. I didn't even know about it. And then I fell in love with Dexter in high school. And ever since then, I've just been like, that's what I want to do. And I... I went through college, I got my bachelor's degree, and now I'm getting my master's. So it wasn't just a phase, like a lot of my family thought. Well, definitely congratulations on that. That's awesome. Thanks. And I guess we can dive into this movie, Slither. Now, I know yes. I sent you the list of the 50 movies, whatever it said, 50 movies that horror fans must see or whatever. Mm-hmm. What made you choose this movie? I mean, I know there were some other movies that I have already done, but what made you choose this movie out of all the other movies? Um, I chose this movie because my dad put it on when I was a child. Uh, it came out in 2006, which was about 14 years ago. And so it, I think when I was watching it on the TV, I was maybe like 10, 11. So I was still pretty young and he put it on and we were like watching it. We're like, what is this? And there are some scenes from this movie that just has haunted me from the day I watched it. Like, uh, the, the, I guess you can call her pregnant. Um, that scene in the barn when they discover her and she's just that ball. Like, I don't know why that's just a scene that I can't get out of my head and I've never been able to. And so when I saw it on the list, I was like, Oh my God, like I remember this movie. It was disgusting at points. Um, I mean now after that, I've seen more disgusting things in the film, but, but it still has its moments and that's why I picked it. (laughs) Okay. It's it's a real interesting movie and watching it, I mean, you see uh what's his name? His name was Merle in Walking Dead, the Walking Dead. Michael Rooker. Oh. Well the actor. It, Grant was the name of him in the movie. And then you see his the person who plays his uh wife in the movie. I'm a mm-hmm. big and she she was in a few episodes of Scrubs. I don't remember what oh. <laughs> that that's where I that's where I recognize her from. And that's the only two faces I recognize in this movie that I can that I remember. I'm, I, you, you know how I'm horrible with names and faces. <laughs> that's the person that I can't stand, which is Nicolas Cage. But mm-hmm. <laughs> I believe she was in the um, the Uninvited. I think she was the stepmom. Okay. I think Elizabeth Banks. You I think is her name. You might be right. I like I said, I'm I'm terrible with that stuff. <laughs> you. <would> th- I- <laughs> You know, I have a, a movie, you know, a horror podcast. I'll start looking these names up, but I just, to me, it's not really that important. I mean, mm-hmm. I, as the title of the movie, if you want to go in there and look it up and figure out if everybody's names and all that, go right ahead. Yeah. Out. You're on my show. What am I saying? Mm hmm. I just, I don't know. Names stick with me. Do they? Oh, yeah. I don't know why, but I just, they know them. Like, I know a handful, but other than that, yeah, I don't really care. <laughs> but yeah, this movie was really interesting. Like it starts out, the cops, the two cops are in the car talking, and well, the one cop keeps talking as the other one's trying to take a nap. And he's, I don't know what the hell he's talking about. I forgot. What <laughs> Something about a speed limit, actually. He's like, I used to be able to guess like within two miles of you know the speed limit, the speed of what the vehicle's going or whatever. And he keeps talking and talking, and they don't. I don't know how they don't notice a big explosion behind them. <laughs> See the thing falling out of the sky. Mm-hmm. You see the little explosion, well, decent sized explosion hitting the ground, you know, when it hits the ground and all that, and nothing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there still. And, you know, it goes from there to eventually, after Grant and his wife, she pretty much turns him down. She's not in the mood. He gets mad. He wants to go for a walk. He ends up at a bar. In the bar, he's messing with the one, some girl that always had a crush on him. Mm-hmm. In the woods. Mess around a little bit, and I don't know how he discovered the, the you know where the explosion happened. He just kind of looked over there, I guess, or walked over there and was poking it with a stick. Mm-hmm. I have no idea, and that's when shit starts to really come on for this movie, like really start to take place. 
Yeah. <laughs> I actually have a fun fact. In the beginning of the movie, when you, right before you meet the dickhead of a mare, you see the there's a funeral home called the R.J. McCready Funeral Home, which is paying homage to the thing. Oh, shit. And it's actually thought that because of that, the movie takes place in the same world or universe as the thing. Wow. That was mm-hmm. When did you... Hang on. I have two questions. How did you <laughs> find this out? Was it something that you just, like, always knew, or was it something that you just found out, like, recently? Um, I watch a lot of YouTube, and I watch a lot of YouTube stuff about horror movies, and I think I was watching something about Easter eggs, and that was one that came up. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. Awesome. I gotta start watching more of that stuff. Like, I, I've been watching... We've been watching a lot of that kind of stuff lately, me and my wife. Um, mm-hmm. Some things like... Uh, like some some documentaries, and then just some of their, you know, how they have the countdowns, excuse me, and all that. Like, well, what's one? I just watched one last night, and I forgot. I watched like two or three last night. I forgot what they all were. That's bad. One was werewolf movies, like unknown werewolf movies. Oh, just unknown werewolf movies. One was like B horror movies, like really good B horror movies from the '80s, and I forgot what the other one was. Ah, oh, cool. That's but, those are always fun. It always gives you a nice list of stuff that you haven't seen. To watch. It does, but what I need to start doing is writing these down or typing them down on my phone so I, so I remember them. But yeah, I, me too. I, I, I channels at the very least, and I like the video, so I know I'll eventually run into them again. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, it's, there's, a lot out, there's a lot out there. It's, it's crazy because you would think that, as a horror fan, it's funny how people will be like, hey, have you seen this movie before? Or, hey, have you seen it? How is this movie? And I'm like, I've never even heard of that movie. But you're a horror Oh, yeah. Fan. Like, yeah, I'm a horror fan, but that doesn't mean I've seen every single day. It's impossible. Oh, yeah, I agree. Like, people will do that to me, too, and they'll try to stump me. Because I've seen a lot. I've seen a lot more than people like to think I've seen, being that I'm 22. <laughs> yeah. um, they always look at me, and they're like, ah, I can trip her up. Like, she says she's a horror fan, but... There are sometimes when people people will stump me, and then I always have to make it my goal to go watch them. <laughs> nothing wrong with that either. There's nothing wrong with that. Like this, I've never. I can admit, I've never seen this movie till today. Slither, and it's a fun movie, though. It really is. I I call it a hidden gem. I think that's what I said to you earlier because it's one where no one talks about it that much, but it's it's surprisingly good. And there's like even a little wicked. There's like a wicked humor attached to it as well. No, you're right. You're right. And I actually, that list, real quick, the way I found, actually, I, my wife found it because it was on, um, it's on Tubi and Amazon Prime, the top 50 list, whatever. And it's just a count. These people are just on there talking about these movies. And as we were watching, it, I just looked it up on my phone, Googled it, excuse me, because I like, I, like when we watch the movies and stuff, now we'll post it in the group. I'll post a picture with it. So I was Googling it and then I seen that they actually had the actual list on the, you know, the actual top 50 list on so I'm like, I should just post this as well because why not? Mm-hmm. If you want to watch the whole freaking countdown, you could just go through them and go, oh, I've seen these. I want to watch these. Yeah. That's what I've been trying to record lately is these these movies off this list. It's, this movie, though, it was... um. I'm trying to think of what it... I can't think of what movie it reminds me of. I, I, ha- I, like, I thought I had something in mind, but I can't think of what. Mm-hmm. Those things kind of look like. Have you ever seen Jason Goes to Hell? I don't think I'm. I haven't gotten that far in the Jason franchise franchise yet. She's a. Fan. I know. I'm a Freddy. I mean, yeah. Freddy fan. But uh, anyways, like, I believe the things that were in the movie looked like like one of those little slither things. Yeah. It's, you know, it's hard to, I haven't seen the movie in a while. It's, it's, it's kind of hard. It's, it's kind of weird. But really quick, I know you remember the nightmare shop. <laughs> I sent me and my wife one of these the other day, so I got to shout them out when I can. Nice little hat. And I will finally have merch. I've been talking about it for a while, but ordered like I have like 40 hats, and we have like 40 of these things. Just got to sew them on. Cool. Yes. Yeah, very little. Got to do something. Yeah, it's exciting. But um, okay. I have the movie playing in the background on mute. Now I'm at the scene where Grant goes to the one lady's house that he was messing with earlier in the movie, and he's in her room. Which 
I'm really quick before I even say this part. Why didn't they go there in the first place? Remember when? Because they he was just over there like the day before. Or they were hanging out like the night before. As he mentioned, I think when he opened the door, he says something about, "Oh, is the I think he says half Mexican there," and I'm assuming that's her boyfriend or husband. Yeah. She does have a little infant, and she said, "No, he's at his parents for the weekend." Okay. Okay. Uh, you know what? That does make sense because she was out, and she does have a child. So. Mm-hmm. But it was, it was just, I was just like, I thought about that. For, I didn't even give that any thought. Like, maybe he was just home the day before. Mm-hmm. I guess it has to happen either way or else we wouldn't get this movie. Oh, yeah. He needed to go in the woods. He had to discover the the pod thing. Yeah. and But, yeah, so he's at her house now. And when I first seen it, I thought he was going to do something to the baby because he ends up in the baby's room for a minute. And the baby, you know, looking down at the baby when, when the child's in the crib. Mm-hmm. And he's like smiling, but then he leaves the room. So right there, I was thinking, you know, it shows him back in her room. I was thinking he killed her or killed the baby, did something to the baby. But it doesn't, mm-hmm. it doesn't show the baby harm or anything. It actually doesn't show the baby for the rest of the damn movie. Look no, up. you don't know what happens to the baby. At some point, um, when she's like the big ball, she asks the officer, "How is my boy?" And he says she, he's doing fine, but someone else kind of like. I can't remember the scoffs or something in the background. So I'm not sure if the baby is fine. I'm not sure. And it doesn't really tell you except for that small exchange with the police officer. Yeah. See, I, 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 I must have missed that. I don't know how I missed that. Oh. I miss those small things sometimes. It's Okay, now his wife's getting back home. The lights are all off. And another crazy thing which I didn't really think anything of it was all the freaking meat he was getting the raw, I, the raw mm-hmm. all of like it was because it shows him he goes to the store he's like yeah can I get eight packs matter of fact make that 10 matter of fact make that 14 then he goes to his truck and you see just a bed full of fucking meat yep bed full of meat and I'm just like all right mm-hmm. I, I was thinking at some point what I really thought was going to happen was he was going to be eating the raw steaks or whatever he grabbed, and his wife was going to see him doing it. Oh. Just because that, that kind of ha- – I can't think of a movie, but you know how sometimes it's just in a horror movie, something weird or crazy is happening like that. And, you know, the wife, the friend, somebody just kind of walks in on you doing that, and it's like, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. But uh, I was wrong. <laughs> I was wrong. Yeah. yeah, it gets interesting. Um, There are some parts to this, like I said in the beginning, how – it was thought that James Gunn trying to put this in the same universe as uh, the thing. And there are some aspects of the movie that do kind of remind me of the thing. But with that being said, there is some parts that disappointed me because of that, because they did use a little bit of CGI and it didn't age too well. No. But, <laughs> but most of the movie is done practical effects and I do appreciate that. And it does look really badass. And yeah. <laughs> Practical effects, they're always the best. See, I do get why they have to do CGI at times. I just, yeah. I don't love it. No, yeah, me either. Just like the little, as you can see in the post, there's the little slugs. There's points when the slugs are CGI, like when it's crawling up into the bathtub. But then once it's in the bathtub and it's swimming, it's practical effects. And it looks really cool and it looks really menacing. And I really loved it because it reminded me of the bathtub scene in Nightmare on Elm Street. Maybe that. They, they they had to be paying homage to it, and I'm sure I, they, they they had to because mm-hmm. pretty much laying the same way. Yep. Music, her eyes are closed. She's just kind of chilling, and then she the only difference is she wakes up and notices something. The other girl, her mother calls her, and she like moves, and you know she wakes up. Hmm. I think so too. Being that he paid homage to the thing, he's. I mean, it's James Gunn. He goes on to make more horror movies, obviously, mm-hmm. and he probably was like just tipping his hat at Nightmare on Elm Street there. I. I I like it. I like it though. I like it when it works. I'll say I don't like it. And again, I wish I could think of examples. But I don't like when movies try to either take something from a movie, either copying or paying homage to it, and it just doesn't work for the movie. It doesn't work for the scene. Uh, oh, um, there was an example of that in the most recent Black Christmas. They tried to pay homage to The Exorcist Three by having the killer come out with the um, Christmas lights and like. A, Tacker and then like Strangler in the same sense when that ghost came out scared everyone in Exorcist 3 and cut the nurse's head off. Well, it's assumed because 
the movie's older, so they don't really show it. But yeah, there's a, there's a people were saying hey, it wasn't really done in good taste, and like plus everyone hated the most recent Black Christmas. So I didn't see that yet. I still gotta watch it. I haven't seen it, but I've seen the scene. <laughs> It's one of those movies where, I mean, it was already remade once, and the remake was pretty good. The original remake was pretty good. And mm -hmm. obviously good. And they did it again, and people are just saying, like, from what I heard about it, it was just bad. I do want to watch it, though, because of that reason. Mm -hmm. and, but I feel... I, I, I don't think I'll like it. I don't know, though. And I feel it's geared more towards, like, teens and younger. Well, the problem with the movie, um, going off topic just for a second, just to rant about Black Christmas, I refused to watch it <laughs> because they overdid the um, they overdid the feminist thing. That's why it's terrible. Not that I disagree with feminists. I'm a feminist. I, I think the original Black Christmas was did plenty in the in the name of feminists. I don't think they needed to shove it down your throat. Like I've seen at least in the scenes that I've watched of the newest Black Christmas. There's even see, there's even I believe the director who went on Twitter and was like, oh, like this movie isn't for men. And I was like, hmm, that's not right. But. It, all in all, from what I've seen, like, I've watched a lot of reviews of it because part of me doesn't want to go see it because of that. And it just, they, um, they, they try to excuse any negative commentary, especially from men, because they're trying to say, oh, well, it's not meant for you anyways. And it's like, well, the movie sucked. Just There you go. You got it from a female. Yeah. <laughs> but I haven't seen it. I have not seen it, though. But I'm going to watch it, and I'm going to review it. I'll put it to you like that. Maybe we can review it. All right, I will watch it just to review it with you. <laughs> and I'll, I'll put it to you. I'll say it like this. I'll try to keep to this. I'll let you be the more negative one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because apparently the movie's not for men, which is half your audience. But Exactly. Man. That's what I thought was bizarre. And from the scenes that I have seen, it, it gets very pushy with the, the – with all the feminist stuff and it's like you don't need to be pushy like the uh, thing about ho movies and especially horror movies is less is more and if you wanted to put that into a movie and have a great message like that i think the message they were going for at the underline was a great message but they went too yeah. much and they they kind of shoved it down the audience's throat which yeah you can that's the thing though when they overdo stuff like that when you're trying to i get when movies try to send a message or when someone tries to send a message because we figure with a movie, it's entertainment. You want to put a gem in there. Mm -hmm. Same thing on the show sometimes. You want to put a gem in there, but then it's like you do it too much where you're doing it throughout the whole – it's like I didn't come here to see you talk about this. I came here to watch this crazy horror movie, and now you're throwing this in. If it's in there, you know, a little bit, a little subtle and stuff, it's fine. You see the message, you get it, cool. But once it's kind of what you're saying, it's just like, all right. And then, and then for the person to come out and say, this movie's not for men, so I really don't yeah. want to – you yeah, know, that's gonna make me want to give you my opinion even more because you said you don't want my opinion. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> and you know what's messed up about that is that that same person, the people that think that way. If it was the other way around, where it's like a movie made for men, and I guess menace, if that's even a thing, or whatever the hell you want to call it, mm -hmm. females, so we don't care about their opinions. That shit would hit the fan so bad. <laughs> Yeah, there'd be issues. <laughs> there'd be protests and everything. Don't watch this disgusting movie or blah, blah, blah. Whatever. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I'm going to watch it. I, You might enjoy it. We might enjoy it. Yeah, you never know. But the gonna... scenes that I have seen, though, are cringy. <laughs> in a bad way. Yes, in a bad way. <laughs> You know, you get cringy when you see a gory scene, but you're enjoying it at the same time. Not cringy like that. More cringy like that. Yeah, it's cringy like, oh, did she really just say that? Oh, gosh. Yeah. That's really? Mm -hmm. I love, like, cheesy, corny lines, but I feel like there's going to be a lot of cheesy, corny lines that aren't funny. And mm -hmm. aren't funny. Mm -hmm. If I can watch that terrible movie, Mandy, I can watch that. There you go. I've actually, you know what? I've seen something a lot worse than that, though. This movie called, um, before we get back into Slither, Blood mm -hmm. on Tubi. It's from 1987. I think it's one of the worst horror movies I've ever seen in my life. Oh. Hmm. Actually, <laughs> this is the funny thing. It actually made me change the way I do my ratings on here. Like, you know how I do 1 to 10? Yeah. 
I changed it from one to ten to negative ten to positive ten. And I wish I gave that movie a negative ten, but I gave it a negative six. It was that bad though, and it was just. Mm-hmm. You have Tubi. Yes, I have Tubi. I'm not recommending it, but I'll never steer you. I'll never tell you not to watch a movie. I'll just say that. And if Fair you, enough. It's not my fault. <laughs> there you go. The cover of the movie, the guy looks like a cheap Freddy. It looks like a cheap Freddy. Ooh, and like a Freddy from Wish. <laughs> worse than yeah, worse than. <laughs> It, it's just bad. Like, the cover looks bad. It looks cheap. And I watched it because of the, you know, the title of the name sounds cool. Mm-hmm. And you're like, you know, cool title, whatever. Let me check it out. And you know, nothing cool about them at all. Nothing, nothing cool about the cover. I'll send it to you. Hang on. Okay. And when me and my friend were, were uh, recording about it, talking about it, we did a podcast on it. He's the one that pointed it out. He said it looks like a like a fat <laughs> a fat cheap Freddy. It's it's bad, but funny. The cover, I mean, not the movie. Oh yeah, the movie was just. It was one of those movies, one of those horror movies where like there's too much dialogue, not enough going on, and just too much bullshit going on. Like there was this, there was a scene where they were literally literally riding in a boat for about I want to say like 15 minutes, and nothing happened. Nothing. Huh. They were just water, like water skiing or whatever. And you would think that something would have happened in like any other horror movie where you see them in a boat for. Look at Jason Takes Manhattan. Mm-hmm. In their boat, a lot of that movie was on a boat, and Jason was killing people. But this shit, Friday the Thirteenth from two thousand and nine, they're on a the speedboat. They're on a the speedboat for a few minutes. Jason kills them both. He kills one in the boat. Kills one under the dock. Mm-hmm. This movie, nobody, and it, I think that's another thing that bothered me. Nobody died in the boat in that scene, and then all the kills throughout that movie, you didn't see any of them. And the night, mm-hmm. the night scenes were bad because, like, you know how, like, if you watch a horror movie and it's nighttime in the movie, you can still see what's going on. Yeah, you couldn't see anything. It was, Ooh. it was bad. It was. I, I know it was an older movie, but it was like shot from like a home video camera from like the eighties. It was just, <laughs> it was bad. It was, yes, it was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, watch at your own risk. Okay, I will. And back to the Slither movie. Back okay. to a better movie. Yeah. <laughs> a whole lot better. Now they're over here, they're grabbing their guns and grenades. Did they grab the grenades? No. Grab a bunch of guns. The police, they're going after the, uh, Grant. Grant and all his little things. Little children things, I guess. I mean, at that point, he's not really Grant. He's like, he's the alien, but the alien is like a part of him, but he's a part of it. It's weird. It is. Well, yeah, I I seen that later when um the one cop that has gotten taken over by the alien is talking to her, talking to his wife. Yep. Saying things that Grant would say to her. Mm-hmm. They all started saying it, and they started saying it in unison. Like, mm-hmm. And then as you can see, and um, when the one chick, it's in her mouth and she pulls it out yeah. and she like can see all the flashback, you kind of see what this thing came from. And then that's how you got to really know it is an alien. And then you see that it's like taken over other worlds. That, that part was cool. And another cool thing, speaking of her was, which was the chick in the tub that, you know, she woke up and pulled it. That's when, you know, she pulls it out of her mouth, but is when she's in the back of the cop car and she's talking and she's talking about like where they came from. She just points at the. She just points at because mm-hmm. she remembers, but she didn't get taken over. But she remembers. I thought that was kind of cool too. Yeah, that's definitely cool. And it definitely shows because, like, I think the big thing about this monster or whatever is that it's hungry because you can see all the things it's like consuming is like if they just have this like hunger to them, like they can't stop eating. And I think that's like what the idea of what the alien is is that it just has to keep consuming these, these people or these bodies. Yeah, yeah. And going back to what you were saying earlier with the woman that turns into that big-ass ball from just eating. She's like, don't look at yep. me. Don't, don't look at me or don't judge me or something. Yep. And just, it was just, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. That scene has stuck with me from childhood. That scene with the, just her as this ball and then her face, 
right in the middle of it. Yeah, it's just like this head and then a ball. It's just makes. <laughs> and then when she ruptures, it was just like, oh lord. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I did like this movie. I will say that though. Like I had, I was a little iffy in the beginning, but then once it started to pick up, I was like, okay, this is this is a pretty fun movie. It's very fun. It is 2006, so it wasn't the best year for horror movies, but I think this is a hidden gem in yeah. all the madness, because it is, I do like the practical effects, I like the monster, I like the concept, mm -hmm. the acting's not too cringy. No, but see, with me, I don't really, I guess it depends on the horror movie, I don't really look at horror for, like, great acting. True. Mm -hmm. it, it depends on the movie, like, if it's a movie that's more of a story, I'll say, like, um... A quiet place or something you're looking at the acting a little bit more than you would for something like this or say something like a friday the 13th or nightmare on elm street mm -hmm. um, it's not good acting in those movies i'm just saying i'm not really watching the movies to be like oh my god this is a masterpiece and that's oh yeah they're, they're, i love those movies oh yeah as a matter of fact those are those movies that have like the most rewatchability in my opinion i mm -hmm. i don't know why but they just they do Mm -hmm. I don't know if Jason will kick Freddy's ass, but that's besides the point. I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> so, did you, um, is this something that you would watch again, though? Like, oh, yeah. I, I liked it. I, I think it's also like nostalgic for me because I watched it when I was younger and it did give me a little bit of scarring, I guess. <laughs> mental scarring um because i was so young and um but it i mean it helped fuel my love for horror movies and i like always hold body horror close to my heart so i like i like stuff like this when things are like gross and grotesque and contorted and no it's cool what um, i know you'd rewatch i mean is this something that you could rewatch like i think a better way to ask the question would be like soon like say within the next couple of days or next couple of weeks or is it something that you'd have to wait like a few months or maybe a year to watch it again? I think if I were to watch it again soon, it'd be because I was showing it to someone. Okay. That's what I meant by mm -hmm. like, with this. <clears throat> I'm kind of I'm kind of in the middle. Like, would I rewatch it again? Probably. One, maybe I'll say, well, I have it on now, but it doesn't really count because I'm not listening. <laughs> like, well, no, that counts. But I'll say, like, if – I guess one, if somebody wanted to see, you know, my wife or one of my friends, whatever, hey, let's watch this. I want to see it. I've never seen it. I'll watch it. And then maybe just later on down the road just to revisit it. Mm -hmm. Maybe. But other than that, it's not a bad movie, but it's just not something that's like something I can go back to easy, I guess I could say. Versus like, again, going back to a Friday the 13th or a Nightmare on Elm Street. Mm -hmm. It's crazy that those movies have so, so much rewatchability now that I really think about it. Because they're... For me, Friday the 13th, I'll say, because I know the series so well. Mm -hmm. I can throw that movie on, have it so I can hear it, and, you know, say you're doing stuff around the house, you don't have to pause it, and I'm sure you're the same way with Nightmare on Elm Street. Oh, yeah. And then you can just, like, walk in the room, like, oh, I want to see this. Say you're talking to your boyfriend. Mm -hmm. you know, I'll, I'll be right back. I want to go see this this kill scene, and he's probably, I don't know how well he knows the series. But he, some Not people, well. <laughs> How do you how do you know this is about to come? Like, listen, I, I just know this movie. I just know this franchise. I know this movie, so I know this is about to come. I'll be right back. That's why I say mm -hmm. I'll be right back. And I'm the same way with the Friday the 13th series. Like, I'm like, okay, I know what's about to happen. I know what's about to you damn near know what they're about to say. Yep. And it's just, I can quote most of the movie. <laughs> now, what's your favorite for that franchise? Name for Nightmare on Elm Street? Oh, well, it's the classic, the first one. I love it. I love Heather Langenkamp. I think that's also why I like the third one. That's like my close second favorite for me. Uh, the sequel is rough, mm -hmm. but for Nightmare on Street 2? Yeah. It's rough. Um, I have some issues with it, but I still love it because I love Freddy. So. <laughs> I'll do that after we're done recording. <laughs> I actually enjoy it. Like, my, <clears throat> I have to rewatch part two and part three again. I know I've seen part three a lot. Mm -hmm. Just to kind of see which one's my favorite, because I I know it's out of the first three. I know that for a fact. It's either three, two. It's either it's one of those three. I'll say. Mm -hmm. I did just watch my wife and I just watched part four the other day because I haven't seen that in years. Like I I think I've watched the whole Nightmare on Elm Street as far as like all the way through once, maybe twice. Yeah, same. And then like I've seen one, two, and three quite a few times. Mm -hmm. So I want to kind of get used to seeing the rest of it because eventually I do want to do a countdown for it. Have you seen New Nightmare? Which one is that? 
it is the last one. Well, the last one. Or the remake, right? It's it no, because then there's Freddy. No, because it there's that one, and then there's Freddy versus Jason, and then the remake. But it's after Freddy's dead. I don't. If I did, it's been a long time. It is. Um, it's one of those horror movies that breaks the fourth wall, and it doesn't really fit in with the others. So you can watch it without having any knowledge really of the others, except for you need to know who Freddy Krueger is, obviously. Yeah. But it's it's good. It's different. It's weird. And it's a lot. It's on a lot of people's like when they rank Nightmare on Elm Street movies. It's towards the beginning for a lot of people's listens. It's the same with mine. Mine goes one, three, new Nightmare. One, three. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. High up. Wow. Yeah, it's very high up for mine. What about the remake? Before and then we'll get back to Slither, people. Don't worry. Um, the Nightmare on Elm Street remake. I have issues with it. It's not perfect. Um, I think they did too much of a backstory, and I think that gave a little bit of um, it gave a little bit of a hum humanity behind Freddy Krueger, and I get that. Like, but he's not supposed to be um, felt bad for, and and you feel bad for him a little bit at some point. I mean, and then later they have to throw in this bombshell to make him like this huge, horrible person, so that you don't feel bad for him. But I think they did too much of a backstory. Like less is more. I, I like what they did. I think they did. I think they did an okay job. But Rooney Mara stated that when she was filming the movie, she wanted to quit acting, so she didn't give it her all. So that already tells you how terrible of a, a Nancy she is. And uh, and there's no Glenn. It's his name's Quentin. I don't really get it, and I don't know. It's it's. It's different. It's a different breed. There's also a lot of CGI, which I don't appreciate. It's 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 a it's kind of a love hate relationship with me because it's still it's still Freddy Krueger. It's still Nightmare on Elm Street, but it's it's not the Nightmare on Elm Street I know and love. I get it. I get like I, I think I watched that movie once or twice. I do want to revisit it just because I didn't like it the first two times I've seen it, but I haven't seen it in years. Mm -hmm. uh, I do want to revisit it and kind of just watch it with a more open mind and just I don't know just check it out but I just I think my biggest issue with it was from what I remember was the look of Freddy I didn't like the look yeah. and not that the guy did a bad acting the guy did good acting it was just, no yeah it's, it's one of those things where it's like instead of you know like with Michael Myers with Jason they wear a mask so you don't see how they, you know, so I guess the mask looks different, a little different. Each, well, especially with Halloween, the mask looks way different throughout the series. But Yeah. I mean, like, still, it doesn't bother you as much as the look of Freddy. And it's because it was one guy playing it through the whole damn franchise. One guy, plays, one voice. Yes, they changed the makeup here and there, but it still had, like, his, it still had Robert's facial features throughout the whole yeah. franchise. And I think that was, like, the biggest my biggest issue with it, so I do got to go back and rewatch it because I do. I'm the type of person I do love backstories and horror movies, mm -hmm. and I got again. I got to see it again and just kind of. Yeah. Yeah, my issue with how Freddy looked is they just CGI'd him. It was bad. Don't CGI your stuff, people. Like that's how uh, the most recent scary stories to tell in the dark, like they did all the makeup for that movie and then they overlaid CGI on top of it. I go, what were you thinking? I, I, I just watched that recently. Mm -hmm. It wasn't bad. It was decent. No, but like the CGI was unnecessary. Agreed. Agreed. But the story, the story for that was decent. It was fun. It was, again, that was another one that I feel was more geared towards children, of course. Yeah. But, it wasn't one of those movies where it was like, you know, some some movies are geared towards children and you're watching it and you're just like, oh, I can't watch this shit. Yeah. It wasn't that. It was, it was entertaining at least. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm wondering slash hoping if they're going to be doing the sequel because of the way that ended. I hope so. And hopefully they do more practical. Um, yeah. <laughs> The explosion. It's cool that it exploded, but I don't like the way it looked when it, like, when it, the explosion. Mm -hmm. all the, I understand they had to make it look big and all that. Yeah. It looks so cheesy when it's CGI. It just looks, it looks cheap. Yeah. It looks cheap. And it doesn't help that that was like 2006, so CGI is not the best. Yeah, true. But I mean, 
still practical is just sometimes less is more. You don't have to. You could show her getting ready to explode, and then maybe show the after effects. Something. Mm-hmm. They didn't. They didn't. That bothers me. Oh yeah, the CGI bothered me, especially since they wanted to put the movie in the same. The universe is the thing, and the thing is known to be like one of those big practical effects. Like it's always praised for its practical effects. It still holds up to this day. I mean, I watched the thing the other day, and it's still scary. It's still like it holds up, and I think that's where part of this movie hit, missed the mark. Is that you're gonna pay homage to such a really good practical effects movie, and you're gonna still use CGI to the extent you do. I mean, they did use a lot of practical effects, and I think the practical effects they did use looked amazing. It looked creepy. It looked scary. But you can definitely know and notice the parts that are CGI. Yes, you're right. You're absolutely right. And it's it's a it's it's a shame, especially because they're saying it's supposed to be paying homage to a certain, to a movie that's known for its practical effects. Like when people think about the thing, you're like, yo. Practical effects is one of the best ever done it. Mm-hmm. It was just amazing. Did not yeah. Did you like the one from two thousand? Two thousand and whatever. Was it? Who was that from? Oh, um, the th- the thing two thousand ten. That's what it was. Two thousand. Yeah. Um, I have the same issue with it. They just use they they use heavily CGI in that one, like even more so. Like this movie was like, uh, it it, it was about. It was more practical effects than CGI and Slither. But in The Thing 2010, it was all CGI. It was, I liked the concept. I liked the idea of it being a prequel. I liked all that stuff. Um, I mean, they kind of just like cookie color cutter took the story and just did almost the same thing. And they could have done way more with it, especially being a prequel. And uh, I, was un- in- I was underwhelmed. Underwhelmed? Mm-hmm. See, that's another one I got to revisit. The one from the 80s, I loved it. That was. Oh, cool. yeah. Like, as as good as it looked, like how you said how it stands to this day versus, I'll say Slither, Mm -hmm. 06, it's amazing how well it looked and how well they did back then. Yeah. And I think that's a downfall with technology is with now you could do the CGI shit before you had to do the practical effects. Yeah. They had some little cheesy computer generated stuff here and there for certain movies, but still, like, you really had to do practical effects. Mm Mm-hmm. Again, 30 years later, it still stands up to this day. Yep. And I think they should I should think they should keep using it. I mean, in certain circumstances, yeah, I understand when CGI is more beneficial because of time constraints or money, but mm-hmm. I, I do think that they shouldn't just heavily use CGI because it it doesn't hold up until we get to a point where technology can look real. It it doesn't. It it almost falls into something called the uncanny valley where something looks Almost real enough, but not quite real enough that it looks weird. Yes. That makes sense. And I I honestly don't think technology will ever catch up to practical effects just because you can't get realer than real as far as somebody sitting here molding something and making it with their hands and just yep. the time and effort into it. You can only do so, so much with a computer-generated thing. Yeah, I agree. And it's cool, too, because, like, especially when it comes to horror movies, like, when it comes to action movies, like, do your CGI all you want. But when it comes to horror, the thing with horror is you're trying to scare people. And when it looks like a fake, almost cartoon, it's not scary. And when they do do things where they they puppeteer it, honestly, when things are puppeteered, they are creepier. Like, they have a creepier... Um, movement to them, and it's it is scary. It's more scary than if you were to add movement through CGI. Agree, agree, like Agre- I agree with you one million percent on that. And it's just mm-hmm. again, it goes back to rewatchability. It goes back to just like it stands out too. It re- mm-hmm. stands out. Like, with these horror movies again, going back to the thing. You look at the movie. that's one movie where someone say someone's like, hey, I want to watch a horror movie that has some awesome practical effects. Yep, the thing. Times, I'll say nine times out of ten, that's probably gonna be on everybody's list. That's that has seen the movie. I'm saying. Yep. I got the thing. Mhm. Or even um, American Werewolf in London. That transformation. Oh yes. That transformation was freaking. I was like, holy shit! Wow. Mm-hmm. This is great. Yeah, my dad brought that up the other day about how people in the theater were like, because <gasps> they'd never seen anything like that. Because you normally, um, werewolf movies, it'd be like they'd turn away and then they'd come back and they'd be a werewolf and you never see that transformation. That's See, that's one thing I would love 
well, I'm going to say is I wish I had a time machine being in the age that I am and having the knowledge I do, but I wish I could just go see I shit as many horror movies as possible, especially like the big ones, you know, like the ones that st- still stand to the time now. Yeah. The Jaws, the Friday the 13th, the Exorcist, Poltergeist thing, all those movies, but see it in theater, go back in time and see it in theaters when they first came out. Yeah. I just, I think not only, even with the knowledge, like I said, still having the knowledge I still have. Yeah. But just to see people's reactions, like people's real reactions, because it's like mm-hmm. nowadays, you I'm sure you hear it as well as I do all over social media. Oh, this is the scariest movie in the world. People passing out, throwing up in theaters. And you watch the movie, you're like, what the hell? What the hell is this? Yeah. Oh yeah. Doing? It's just, it's so funny, and it's it's like back, but back then it's like, Chess Chainsaw Massacre is another one from '74, but it's like, it's oh like, yeah ever seen anything like that type of movie and right now it seems subtle to us because of the shit where you know the shit we've seen over the years but then that was like pushing the limit that was pushing the envelope back then like yep this is crazy i can't believe they showed this Mm -hmm. and then now we we get that we get more so but i don't think it's done as well even yeah i'll say with texas chainsaw massacre for all those kills for that movie I think it's the best movie as far as like doing off screen kills. Is you know, because you'll see him like raise the hammer, raise the axe, and like sling it down, but you don't see him hitting the person. Mm-hmm. But it's like the best, scariest moments of off screen kills in any other horror movie because it's just. No, I don't think any other mo- horror movie is going to be able to top that or touch it. I think one reason I think is because we're expecting to see things now because, you know, we've seen them for the past X amount of years. Yeah. It just. It's just something that just can't be done again, even if mm-hmm. it's good. It's not going to be done as well as that because they had to do it back then. Or else it had to be, from what I was re- read or heard, it had to be like an X, for certain things, it had to be an X rating, which to me is just weird. Yeah. I don't know. But this yeah. movie, this is a, what would you rate this movie? Um, I get a 10 to a positive 10. What the hell are those things called? They, they, yeah, they never gave them a name. Right. Um, slimy aliens give this movie. Slimy aliens. Um, um, I think, I think there's just a huge nostalgic factor to the movie for me, so I have to give it an eight. Okay. And I respect that because you said you first time you seen this movie was with your father, so mm-hmm. adds into it, and it is creepy crawly and all that gory stuff, which is also great. Hmm. So I respect that. I'm going to give it a... Let's see. It won't be a negative rating. I'm going to give it a six. A solid six. That's fair. I, I did enjoy it. It was fun. I wish it was a little darker. Yeah, there, it's, it has a lot of comedy to it. There is some aspects where there are a lot of laughs. Which, I don't mind I don't mind the comedy aspect because you know I like the horror comedy stuff. But I just wish it was a little darker and just... Mm-hmm. Or... Um, more action to it, like as far as with the stuff going on that he was doing. I wish he kind of did that a little bit more throughout the movie before it kind of. Yeah. You know, it did. Every, I'm glad. I mean, it's one of those things where this movie is one. Of, it's kind of a fast paced movie. Everything does. Everything happens kind of fast. Oh yeah, which I like. Which I do enjoy. I just wish it was kind of spread out a little bit more throughout the movie. I guess. Yeah, I get it. Like the 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 posters you have right there, you're seeing those little slimy things. And the thing is, it makes it look like these are going to be in the movie the whole time, and they're not. They're on screen max five minutes. Yes. Th- I wish they were in the movie more. One more. Yes. Another. Seeing them go around, like, as far as how a lot of people in the town were infected, it would have been even cooler if they just had scenes where it just, if it was like a two-minute scene where you see people getting infected throughout the town. And there was, like, more, like, zombie-like things. Because it did, it, it, this movie makes it focus on that when really the movie is more focused on Grant and Grant being a monster and Grant as the as this monster rather than these things. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. Which, I, I mean, I get it because it makes, it, I guess it's supposed to make him look like the bad guy, so to speak. So I get that, but still it would be cool just to see a little bit, a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Not a bad movie, though. Like I said, it's one of those things... As far as rewatchability, we both answered the question. I said I would, as far as if somebody wanted to watch it, wanted to watch it with me, cool, I would. Mm-hmm. And then maybe a couple years down the road, I would to kind of revisit it. But other than that, 
I mean, and that's not a bad thing because there's just some movies. I'm sure you've seen plenty of movies where it's you're like, this is a good movie. I enjoyed it, but it's not something I would necessarily go back to. Yeah, exactly. But you have a different, again, you have a different feeling for it too because you watch it with your father. Like for me, that movie for me, which I think is a great movie either way, but was Christine. I seen that movie a few years ago for the first time and it was why I was happy to be at my father's house. It was just coming on and my dad's not in the horror at all. Yeah. He's seen that movie before. He's like, have you ever seen this? I was like, no. I heard about it, but I've never seen it and just left it on and watched it and that movie's, I'm a car guy, so I love cars. That movie's freaking awesome. Yeah. Hey, I wish my vehicles can just fix themselves. Minus the killing and all that stuff. I just wish they could. Yeah. Drive. And just drive, you know, just just drive a little. So you know how cool that would be if you had a car, if your car can just like, or cars, however many vehicles you have. But if your vehicles can just say they drive you to work, drop you off, and then that's like your car just out Ubering, making money. Like, yeah. I would love that. <laughs> I, again, minus the killing stuff. Oh, yeah. I was like, listen. Christine, don't kill anybody today. Just drive them to work and drive them home. If they're trying to kill something, that's different. Mm -hmm. But uh, this was a fun time. We definitely got to do this. We definitely got to record again. Yes, for sure. And how about next one, Black Christmas? Yeah. <laughs> the new one, the remake. Yeah. Or we can compare. We can, I can watch all three and we can just compare them. That's a good idea. That's an even better idea, which. My guess, as of right now, which I could be wrong, it's probably going to be the original as being the best, then the next one, the first remake, and then the shit show. Yeah. <laughs> I'm down to yeah. it. I'm done. That means we're going to have to have three different ratings for each. That's fine. <laughs> Maybe an overall rating for all three. We'll figure it out, though. But um, Yeah. Is there anything you want to plug or mention before we wrap this up? No, I don't have a Twitter anymore. <laughs> All right, well, to the listeners, thank you all for watching. Thank you all for listening. Michaela, thank you again for coming on. Had a great time as usual. And uh, what was I going to say next? Oh, if you ever want to be on the podcast, shoot me an email, horrorwithsurd.sturdy. Again, that's horrorwithsurd.sturdy at gmail.com. I have a YouTube channel now with video, so check me out on YouTube, horrorwithsurd.sturdy. I have a Facebook group and a Facebook page, the group. All of it's horror of us are but the group is for anybody and everybody to post anything and everything horror related, including your own projects. So feel free to do that. The page is more for me posting stuff about the podcast and all that kind of stuff. Any type of horror updates I have, I'll be posting it on the page. I also stream on Twitch now. Not the best gamer, but I have a great time. Nine times out of ten, I'm either drinking or smoking. That's, not, that's besides the point. <laughs> I'm entertaining. So if you ever want to watch me on Twitch, check me out on Twitch, horror underscore with underscore sir underscore sturdy. I believe that's all. YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, yeah. And anywhere you listen to podcasts, you, sh you can hear me. Be dropping two podcasts a week, and everybody stay safe. And as always, I'll see you in your nightmares. Hang on one second, Michaela.